that we have always advocated for use of rail, for mode of shift from road to rail, because obviously, and because of most of the advantages that accrue from use of rail worldwide. There are issues to do with safety. There are issues to do with the greenhouse emission. All issues to do with the environment and the cost. Unfortunately, the cost was not what was expected. Stakeholders have complained that the cost is much higher than the road transport. So the directive from the president that clearance should divert back to Mombasa, bring us to the whole system whereby shippers have a choice to choose which mode of transport to use. This means that Kenya Railways and KPA and some of the stakeholders in the rail need to come together to devise ways to be more effective, more efficient, to attract cargo. As a corridor, while we advocate that these modes should compete, we are alive that worldwide rail is normally subsidized by government. Put programs in place to ensure efficient evacuation of cargo by rail to attract the traders to use the rail freely for the long term uh, benefits to this country. We still are hopeful that with time, the efficiency that will be created by moving by rail will impact positively and therefore make importers and exporters use the rail. Currently, SGR accounts for slightly over 20% of cargo from the bottom of us going to the hinterland. The road still takes a bigger share. Last week, I was in Kigali, and I met stakeholders, and they are all hopeful that they want to involve their stakeholders to pick cargo from Naivasha. They have always wanted to use the rail to Naivasha, and hopefully even use the inland waterways through Kisumu. But what they stress is that the cost and the time has to be taken into account our way bridges in Maria Kani and slightly more in Atriva. With this directive, we are going to see much more increase of trucks from Mombasa. Uh, while the shippers have a choice, from the point of view of roads, it will be carrying a heavy load Therefore, it calls for all of our stakeholders to ensure there is efficiency in our corridors, in roads and rail, to ensure that cargo moves smoothly, less time, at lower cost. Thank you. And please, measures to reduce accidents. One of the measures is to have rest stations where a driver drives for a particular number of hours and he has a place to rest, a place that is organized and clean, and even have a place that uh, he can get attended if he feels unwell. So we need, we are prom the promoting wellness centers in those RSS. Now, currently, apart from working with the ministry to create a task force, we have been working with a private developer in Kiko Bay, and soon a private developer will start uh, building a model rest station, rest station at Kope. We have also done a survey of some of the rest stations that are currently along the corridor, and we have advocated to stakeholders to improve their services, to make them better and usable, which will go a long way to making drivers have a rest and therefore drive safely. You are taking the same by rail, it will cost you cheaper to Nairobi, to ICT, around 70,000, but you will incur costs in the last mile. The last mile means
from ICD Nairobi to either industrial area or thicker. We still incur costs hundred dollars bringing that container back to Mombasa. We incur costs from the port of Mombasa taking to the shippers nominated uh, empty container yard. Another hundred dollars. When you calculate all this, of course what you pay for road transport of eight thousand will mean that you pay and the containers delivered back. So when you look at the overall cost, uh, the traders seem to think and it's proven that it's slightly expensive. Now, that's why I see it as stakeholders, especially Kenya Railway and other government agencies have to come together to take into consideration the cost, but also the overall benefits in terms of time, how long does it take to transport, in terms of taking bigger volume, uh, bigger haulage by rail, so that we look at the whole holistic uh, to be able to say that it's cheaper to go by road. As I've said, going by rail, environmentally friendly, uh, in terms of safety sense. And if you look at other initiatives around the world, long distance is normally taken by rail, but the government takes in, steps in to provide an incentive and subsidize the extent of that benefit that comes by use of rail. And in the long run, if our rails are efficient, you don't have to force traders to use the rail. They will simply start using the rail, and that's where we are heading to. As a colleague, we are saying, yes, these modes of transport needs to be efficient and they deliver cargo on time. If they are performing, for us as a colleague, we will say, yes, this colony, Northern colony, needs to be cheaper because there is a lot of complaints that it's one of the most expensive colonies. And we need to bring that down. And the DRC shipped to use of SGR to Naivasha. Naivasha cannot even cope with that cargo. So Naivasha should still remain and be used by our transit markets. To do that, Kenya Railways and other stakeholders need to go out there and all the market, the SGR, but look at their cost structure, change the strategy in attraction to the stakeholders. Now, this question as well as arose, should we have a yard at Maraba? The reason why this comes up is because of the congestion that is seen sometimes going to kilometers, especially from Kenyan side, going to Uganda. And in other cases, on MPTs at Lohala, coming to Kenya. And what we have said as a corridor, can we make our border stations efficient? Can we make our border stations efficient? There is no need for cargo to leave Mombasa, to go all those kilometers, to go and again be put to rest at the border. If our systems are correct, crossing the border should take a maximum of half an hour. And therefore, we should be thinking on how fast we should evacuate cargo along the corridor to the destination, not to have ICDs in Malawi. Now, if our rail was working efficiently with the intermodal change of old rail, the new SDR to old rail, and therefore you want to do clearance of cargo distant for a region in Malaba, that could make sense. But cargo can come in, there is value addition, and they are exported without leaving that vicinity of the port and it creates a lot of employment. Anything around 100 kilometer radius to Mombasa can be a growth hub where we have industries that do value addition. And that's where the government needs to go to. And that's what the government is trying to do by using the Ubuntu. And we need to move much faster. There's a lot of interest in the Ubuntu from investors. So the government needs to move faster and create that report.